Hi there, Mr. Evans here with a video on decision trees. So decision trees are um, part of this uh, section of the specification here. Um, scientific decision making should include understanding and interpreting decision trees and calculating expected value and net gains. In other words, there's a big indicator here that uh, there could be some calculation questions uh, on decision trees um, and you've got to understand their use and value. Okay. So let's get into that. This could be uh, a bit longer than usual, but I'll try and get through it as quickly as we can. A decision tree is a mathematical model that allows managers to quantify the likely result of a decision. Uh, when a manager is making a decision or a management team, um, they will want to have some relatively solid financial data on which they can base their decision. Okay, if we do this, what's going to be the uh, uh, financial benefit for us, the total financial benefit? If we do option B, what's the total financial benefit? Okay, well, let's see which one of those has the highest and then we can discuss um, other factors that would be significant. So a decision tree um, is used to show the choices that can be made. Okay, we could take option A or we could take option B. Fine. It shows us the financial cost. How much is it going to cost us to do option A? How much is option B going to do? Um, we can see the possible outcomes following each choice. The outcome might be success or failure, or the outcome might be high sales versus low sales. Okay, But we can consider the possible outcomes following the choice that we make. We're going to want to attach a probability to each outcome occurring. In other words, okay, we think we're going to get high sales. Okay, well, what's the chances of that? Well, we think that there's 70% will get high sales, but there's a chance, there's a 30% chance we may just end up with low sales if we open in this location. Um, and we'll show that on our decision tree. Um, what is what's like? Uh, what do we then want to do? Okay, so we think that uh, there's a seventy percent chance that we'll get high sales. Um, uh, how much is that actually going to be worth? Let's put a financial figure on that. That will allow us to come to an estimated value for each decision. Well, okay, we, we think that um, there's a certain probability of high sales, a certain probability of low sales. What do we think the, uh, the estimated value is then of this decision, bearing in mind those probabilities that we'll get that outcome in sales? Um, that will then allow us to compare two choices. Okay, so the estimated value of this of going to location A is 100,000, the estimated gain of going to location B is 90,000. Well, uh, let's discuss uh, which one of those options is going to be best. So, um, that's what decision trees uh, can be used to show. So, best thing to do is kind of work through an example. Um, now, I'm based in the United Arab Emirates at the moment. Um, uh, these were literally numbers that I plucked out of the air. We were looking at um, the, uh, a restaurant currently in Dubai, established, and we're saying, well, they've been quite successful. Um, they may face a decision in the future about whether they want to expand, and if they decide they want to expand, they could choose to open a new restaurant in Dubai, or they could choose to open a new restaurant in Abu Dhabi. Now then, these figures, as I say, they've been plucked out of the air. Um, the, I am aware that the currency in the United Arab Emirates is not pound sterling, but that is the key that I have got on my laptop, so that is the currency that we've used. And these figures are purely for us to work for an example. I'm not expecting them to be particularly realistic. So um, yeah, just, just go with them and hopefully they'll illustrate the point. So. <clears throat> the cost of opening a new restaurant in uh, Dubai, uh, £100,000. Uh, we think that that will um, lead to a 70% chance of success. We're already established in Dubai, people know us, okay. So there's a relatively high chance of success. The reward success for success could be £200,000. And the reward for failure, or maybe cost of failure, uh, a loss of £120,000. 
Okay, so Abu Dhabi, uh, a location there, uh, may cost us some, somewhat uh, less, 75,000. However, there might be a lower chance of success. Maybe it's a competitive market, maybe we're not established there. But the reward for success uh, may be somewhat greater, 220,000, um, and the cost of failure a little bit less as well. So as I said, um, they're not particularly realistic figures. I've just used them so we can work through an example. So let's have a look at how we would do that. Again, I just want to emphasize that you will not be asked to construct a decision tree in an exam. It would take far too long and the examiner wants to see how good you are at analyzing and evaluating, calculating at the end of the day isn't a, one of the higher level skills that they'll be examining. What you're far more likely to get is a half completed one and be asked to fill in the gaps. However, if you can make one from scratch, you're going to be ahead of the game, uh, you're going to understand it a lot better and you can be really confident if a question on decision trees comes up. So let's have a look at how we construct it. First of all, each decision tree starts on the left hand side with a square. Uh, in this is going to be put uh, our net gain when we've calculated it. Okay, so let's start filling this in. So our first choice was uh, to open a restaurant in Dubai. We said the cost of that was going to be £100,000. Um, the circle here represents the choice moving to Dubai and we're going to put our expected value of opening the restaurant in Dubai there. So we said there were two, chan two, choice two uh, chances. We said the chance of success was 70%. Um, and that would net us £200,000. Um, well, if the chance of success is 70%, obviously the chance of failure is going to be 30%. We want to, uh, you'll remember from your GCSE math that we can uh, represent probabilities as one. So that's what we're doing here. We want to make um, the probability add up to one. You can think about moving the decimal place. Either way, a 70% chance of success translates as um, a, uh, I can't remember what they're called, numerators. Either way, you can express that as 0 0.7. The point is that these figures here, the probability must add up to 1. If you keep that in mind, you will uh, not go uh, wrong on these. Okay, These must add up to 1. So. Uh, that's Dubai. Um, our figures for Abu Dhabi. It was going to cost us seventy-five thousand. Uh, the chance of success fifty percent. That would net us two twenty. Obviously, if the chance of success is fifty percent, there's a fifty percent chance that we'll fail as well, and that would cost us fifty thousand. Just on these um, negatives here. Um, I've expressed them in brackets. That's common practice in business when you're looking at accounts and so on and so forth. Any negative figures uh, may well be expressed in brackets and all that means is that it's a minus figure. Okay, um, so that's why I've expressed it like that. Now what I'll do now is I'll get the calculator out and run through um, these figures to show you how to fill in the um, decision tree. So, um, what we do is we work from right to left to get to our net gain, which is where we want to get to. So, um, we've said that the uh, total reward, um, if uh, Dubai is a success, is 200,000. Okay, but there's only a 70% chance of that happening. So what's that worth in monetary value? Okay, 140,000. So let me pop that into my memory because I'm going to need that 140,000 in a moment. Clear that. Um, <clears throat> the chance of failure is 120,000 uh, loss minus but there's only a 30 percent chance of that happening so that's worth minus 36,000. now i want to add these two figures that i've calculated together so plus memory recall that gives me 104,000. let me just pop that in here Okay, 104,000. Um, 
Okay, so that gives me my expected value for Dubai. Right, let's do the same for Abu Dhabi. Okay, so I want to clear everything, clear everything out of the memory. 220,000. Uh, we said the chance of that happening was only 0 0.5, so times that by 0 0.5 gives us 110. Put that in the memory. I'll need it in a moment. Okay, clear all of that. Uh, um, so the chance of failure, well, that will earn us £50,000, minus £50,000. Um, there's only a 50% chance of that happening, so we times that by 0 0.5, gives us minus 25,000. We then need to add those two figures together, and that gives us um, 85,000. Okay, so now we've got our expected value um, for each outcome. So Dubai has got a higher expected value than Abu Dhabi. Um, but what's that going to do to our overall net gain? Well, to calculate our net gain, we're going to have to uh, consider the cost of each option. So the expected value of going to Dubai when we've taken into account the probabilities is a gain uh, of 104,000. However, um, to get there, it's going to cost us 100,000. So to calculate our net gain, we take our expected value from the cost, and that is going to give us... That is going to give us 4,000, obviously. So I'm just going to put 4,000 here to uh, remind me that that's the net gain of Dubai. Okay, Abu Dhabi, uh, it's going to cost us, uh, no, it's going to net us uh, expected value 85,000. The cost uh, of opening in Abu Dhabi is 75,000. 85,000 minus 75,000 is going to give me 10,000. So which one is, which decision is going to be worth more? Well, obviously, um, to earn 85,000 uh, when it's only cost us 75,000 is going to be 10,000 is more than the 4,000 for Dubai. Okay, so... Um, that's that. That's how we calculate it. Key thing to remember, we work from here to here. Um, best way to do it is to practice it lots of times. Ask your teacher for questions. Um, you can do what I've done and make it up there. Get a friend and make them up for each other. Um, just work through them so you know how to calculate them. So um, you also need to be aware of uh, the uses and limitations of decision trees. Okay, <coughs> so um, there's a signal that the potential uh, to evaluate um, the use of a decision tree. So what are the benefits of using a decision tree? Well, it encourages a logical approach to decision making. Uh, we had to think through there the costs, the probabilities, the rewards, um, and uh, think through it in a logical fashion. Um, it requires us to go out and gather some data. So we're not just making this stuff up. Um, we're going to need to research costs. We're going to need to search potential revenues and like the outcomes. Um, it gives each option a financial value, which makes them easy to compare. Okay, it's very easy to compare if you say, well. Abu Dhabi is going to be worth 10,000, Dubai is only worth 4,000. That makes them very, very easy um, to uh, compare and contrast. And it encourages the identification of risks, which can then be managed. In other words, well, you know, what, what are the risks of moving? Why is it a 50% chance that we'll fail? Is it because um, the competition is a lot better? Is it because um, we will have a lack of brand awareness? What can we do about that? Do we need to uh, potentially do some marketing there, etc.? So um, we are encouraged to think about the risks, which we can then put some risk management strategies in place to minimise them. So they're the pros of decision trees. The cons, um, well, um, these may not consider qualitative 
uh, factors. For example, who has constructed the decision tree? Is it the finance director? Has the finance director just moved to Abu Dhabi and quite fancies uh, you know, a five minute commute to work? Um, it might not consider the fact that someone's received planning permission to build a, a new restaurant that will open in a, a year just next door to where we're looking, okay? So um, we need to think through those uh, other factors that might have an impact. How are our personnel going to feel about commuting to Abu Dhabi every day? Um, it's reliant on the quality of the data collected, so have we been able to get some good quality information or not? Um, remember, I uh, mentioned in the first video that you can gain evaluation marks by questioning the reliability of data. Um, related to that, I suppose, is that it's difficult to place accurate values on costs, revenues, and probabilities. Okay, you know, very difficult to know if you've got a 70% or a 30% chance of occurring. Um, final point, uh, the external environment can change very quickly, which would lead to inaccurate forecasts. All right, there might be a change in the economy, a change in the political environment, um, you know, technological developments. All of these can have an impact on uh, your costs, revenues, um, etc. Okay, so um, that was a video on decision trees, it was a bit longer than usual, um, but I hope that uh, it helped you with your calculations and evaluation of decision trees. Thank you.